welcome back to another video in my mosaic crochet beginner series in this video we're going to talk about um, yarn ends <laughs> because these can scare a lot of people out of doing mosaic crochet but there are things that we can do to um, make the work easier we can use these ends to create tassels for example we can crochet them into a border and we can also crochet them in as we go along um, so obviously with uh, overlay um, mosaic crochet we're going to have more ends than we are with inset crochet so I am more talking about this technique rather than the other but I'm going to show you those three methods today so uh, using them as tassels crocheting them in as we go along and also working a border to disguise them so as always I'm going to leave a link in the description box below to the blog post with all the information there will also be information there about the other videos in this series so click that show more button or the downwards arrow if you're watching on a mobile device and you'll find all of the information there don't forget to like this video leave a comment because I love to read your comments and also subscribe and click that bell button for notifications of when my videos go live okay so let's get started with making tassels okay so if you are creating a design out of this and you're making it into a scarf for example then tassels are the perfect use of these ends because you can have tassels on the end of the scarf you would just simply make your work very very long long enough for your scarf and build your rows to the width of the scarf that you want and then these will be the end so as you're looking at your scarf this is what the pattern would look like rather than like this you can use this for blankets as well um, maybe if you wanted to add some additional tassels so that they go all the way around um, but I don't know how you would feel about having uh, you know tassels at the edges of your blanket unless of course you had your blanket this way and you had it at the top and the bottom so this is the how you're going to make tassels from your tail ends so we are going to first of all take our tassels um, and just knot one to the other nice and gently like this just to secure them you can do two knots if you want to it's totally up to you um, there are a couple of ways that you can do these tassels um, if you don't mind your tassels being a bit thinner then you can just simply tie these together in groups and make your tassels that way um, but sometimes that can look a little bit sparse in terms of the fringe so you want to just go across and knot these up and we're actually going to be using this method as well when it comes to doing the border as well so just knot this one and then I'll just knot these final two like so so they are a little bit more secure now we're going to go ahead and make some tassels so for this you want to um, grab something so that you can wrap your yarn around so go ahead and grab something that you want uh, which is roughly the width of, that you want your tassels to be okay so I have a handy little tassel maker here which um, it's really easy to use but you could do this the, it's essentially the same with like cardboard and things um, so what I'm going to do here is lay this down over my tassel maker and wrap it around probably four times like so um, you can do this as much or as little as you want once I have snipped that off I'm just going to go ahead and cut and pinch that at the top and then we have our loop ready to create our tassels so you want to take your crochet hook 
and then we are going to go into a stitch here so just above where we've done our knot and pull that yarn through and then I like to make a loop and bring my tassel through rather than using my hook because I just find it a little bit fiddly to do that so we're going to bring that through I'm just going to grab these tail ends make sure they've come through as well uh, so they sit a little bit neater in the stitch and there we have a tassel so we will continue this all the way along now obviously if you want to have multicolored tassels you can do because you are essentially going to have um, a different color tassel as you move along so you could maybe wrap one color around twice and then the other color around twice so all of your tassels are multicolored it's totally up to you to have a play around but once you have applied all of your tassels all the way across you can then go ahead and uh, get a ruler, straighten them out, um, and then snip along so that they're all nice and neat. So that is your tassel method. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can crochet in your ends as you go along. So I'm going to start off my work as I would normally. So I'm going to slip stitch on that next color and then I'm going to bring that tail end um, in between and behind the work and chain one and start off this row with double crochet border stitch how we would normally. So then I'm going to start my pattern repeat. So I'm going to be working into that back loop only of each stitch because we're doing overlay crochet um, and then begin with this pattern repeat so I've got a few more double crochets because the um, the stitch finishes here so I will then go ahead and do my drop down treble continuing to carry the yarn across and crocheting it in for as long as I feel comfortable so I would usually go a good few inches just to make sure that that is really crocheted in before I leave it to just drop out the back like so and then you can go ahead and snip off that yarn so that is what you would do at the beginning of the row just give it a little pull um, just to make sure that's sitting in there nicely now the other end of the row is slightly more tricky it's it feels less natural to do, um, but we'll go ahead and um, demonstrate it here because it is a good technique for um, saving you time. So for example here, where I get a couple of inches be um, before the end, I'm going to go ahead and lay this down towards the back, trying not to pull too tightly and then we're essentially going to do the same thing so we're going to the first one's the hardest one just because we need to catch it we're going to do our back loop only double crochet but catching in that tail end that we want to weave in like so doing that treble and again, you just want to be mindful of how far you are carrying that yarn throughout the work. So I might have wanted to actually start that a little bit further across. Um, but that is basically the technique that you're going to use. So I will just tie off my yarn here. And then you just want to give it a gentle pull just to make sure it's sitting in and out there nicely. But essentially all you then do is snip off your yarn. But with this method, as I say, just make sure that you're crocheting it in as, as much as you feel comfortable, whether it's two, three, four inches, uh, but that is how you can reduce your yarn ends when you are 
doing um, overlay crochet. So the third method is to disguise these ends while you are doing your border. So that is what I'm going to demonstrate now. Okay, so we're now going to be doing the double border to enclose these tail ends. Um, you want to do the same thing as what we did with the tassels. So when I do this, I actually like to do two knots. <laughs> But it's um, totally up to you what you want to do here. But you want to go all the way round and tie two of the tail ends together just to secure them a little bit. Try not to pull um, too tight. You don't want to be just distorting your stitches. So go ahead, do that up uh, one side and the other side and then meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so once you've done that on both sides, you then want to trim down these tail ends because we don't need them to be this long. Um, we only need them to be probably about an inch or so. Um, don't panic about them being this short. So you just want to go ahead and trim those down all the way across on both sides and then meet me back in a moment. Okay, so now we're going to take our yarn and we're going to start off with this first round of this double border. Now this double border I saw on Tina's channel, I'll leave a link in the description box below to her channel, um, and it's just such a perfect border for something like this. In fact, I've actually used it on a project which you will see later on in the year, but it's fabulous for hiding any um, any ends. So first of all, what we're going to do is just work along the top of the work. So I'm just going to create a slip stitch just here. And then we're going to slip stitch in every stitch all the way around. So as we're working our slip stitch, we want to be just mindful that we're not um, creating these stitches too tight because we are going to want to work into them. So we're going to slip stitch all the way to the end of the row. And then once we get to the end, we're also going to slip stitch down the raw edge. So. Don't forget your last stitch just here. And then we're going to turn our work and then we're going to work down the row ends. This can be a little bit tricky because we obviously have those tail ends there, but we basically want to be working into each of the row ends. So again, not working too tightly and just going into each of those row ends with a slip stitch. And this is essentially what you're going to do all the way around your work in order to build the foundation for our double border. So again, making sure that you are not uh, making your slip stitches too tight because we don't want to cause any puckering and we also need to work into these stitches as well. This is what it will look like from the front and then from the back we'll just have lines along the back. Um, so we want to have these at the um, front of our work. On the right side, you're going to work your way all the way around. So down the raw edge, across the bottom, up the raw edge, and then meet me back once you get to the beginning. Okay, so once you've worked your way all the way around, we're going to actually um, snip off our yarn, pull that out, and then we're going to join with the invisible um, join. So we're going to go into that first stitch, might be a bit tricky because I've actually joined it with a slip knot rather than just pulling it through. So go through that stitch from top to bottom and pull it through like so and then go through this stitch from top to bottom take out this tail end here so this last stitch that we created just the top loop yarn over pull through and there we have joined 
Okay, so now you've worked your way all the way round, we're now going to work um, into the chains that we've just made. And what we want to do here, you can either use your um, colour A or colour B, it's totally up to you. But we're going to start by working with the wrong side facing us into these uh, stitches that the slip stitches have made on the back. We're going to drop down half a hook size as well, um, just because it makes things a little bit neater. And then we're going to start off by chaining um, two or three, depending on your preference, for a treble crochet. So that will count as your first stitch. I've chained two. Then we're going to go into the next stitch. So yarn over into that next uh, stitch, the back of that slip stitch, and do your treble crochet. Remember I'm talking in UK terms. So in the US this is known as um, double crochet. So you don't want to be pulling too tight on this stitch because we still need to work into the stitch on the opposite side. And we're going to work our way all the way up to the corner. So just one treble crochet into each stitch all the way up to that corner section. So just as we did with um, picking up those front loops of the trebles in the overlay crochet, we are scooping up that, um, that bar in order to work into it. So we're going to work all the way up to that corner stitch. Once you get to the corner stitch, we're going to twist our work and then chain two, one and two. And then we can start working down this raw edge. So again, going underneath that back bar of the slip stitch and just working in to each of those as you go down the raw edge. Now, this again, working down this edge is a little bit more tricky just because you have to really look where your stitches are. So you're just going to work these treble crochets into each stitch. You can use a double, a double crochet as well if you prefer. Um, but you can work your treble crochets all the way across until you get to your corner stitch again. So once you get to that last stitch, you're going to chain two, rotate your work, and then carry on down the opposite edge. So you're going to work round down the raw edge, across the bottom, up the raw edge, and then to your last stitch here, and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so now you've worked your way all the way around, we're going to go ahead and snip off our yarn, pull that through, and then we're going to go into the top of the first treble that we made, from the back to the front, pull that through, and then from the back to the front of the last stitch, pull that through for an invisible finish. Okay, and now we're ready to move on to the second part of our border. So we're gonna have the right side facing us this time. So it is worth noting that you can go ahead and add more rows to this if you want to. So you could add an additional row, additional three rows, depending on how big your work actually is. When it comes to the corners, you'll work a treble, chain two and a treble um, as you go up. But um, I'm going to leave it as one for now. And now I'm going to turn the work over and then we're going to begin doing the same, but on this side of the work. So this time we're looking at our slip stitches, which is this stitch here, but we're only going to work into the top loop. So this top loop, I'm going to yarn over and pull through, chain two to begin with, and then we're going to treble into each of those um, top loops. So 
I mean, technically it's it's the back loop of the stitch, um, but yeah, it, as we're looking at, at it, it's like the top and the bottom. So that top loop is where we're working into with our treble crochet, like so, all the way to your corner stitch. And then once we get to the corner, we're going to do the same as we did on the other side. So, just going to double check which is my corner stitch, which is this one. So I'll do my treble in there, chain two, rotate the work, and then continue down the raw edge. You can use this method if you want to where you scoop up that uh, top loop. It's totally up to you, whichever you feel comfortable. But we're essentially going to do exactly the same all the way round. So working down this raw edge. So you'll find that these um, tail ends will be within the work. And then into the corner, chain two, into the corner, work round, round, round. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way all the way around, and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so once you've got to the end of the round, you're going to, again, join to the first treble with an invisible join. So working through the stitch and then working through the back loop like so. And then we're ready to actually join these two together. Now, if you've done a double row, then it might be slightly simpler to get your ends in, um, but I've just done this single row for now. So it will probably seem a tad more bulky just doing one row, um, but just because this sample piece is so small, that's what I'm choosing to do. So what we want to do here is Go ahead and um, line up our stitches. So you might want to do this towards the corner. And what we want to do is work into the back loop and the back loop of each stitch. So the ones that are closest together. And we're going to do a slip stitch. So pulling that through and then going ahead and going into the next stitch back loop back loop, slip stitch, back loop, back loop, slip stitch. Just working into the corresponding stitches from the front and the back. And then when we get to the corners, we're just going to continue to work into the back loops of that stitch. So back loop, back loop, and then the back loop, just taking your time, twisting the work, working into the back loop and then we're going back into our stitches again. So just working our way through and then like I said we want to be pushing down those tail ends so that they're working in between those double rows. You won't need to worry too much about pushing them in if you've done um, another row of treble crochets. But you can see that I'm just having to push them down a little bit as I'm working these stitches. So we're just disguising them as we go around. So we're going to slip stitch all the way round so go all the way around and then meet you back when you're at the beginning. Okay, so I have just worked my way all the way around. I joined with the invisible join and I have sewn in my ends and that is the double border, which just beautifully encapsulates those tail ends. And it looks stunning when again, it is a little bit wider as well on a larger project. So, they are your three methods for 
um, dealing with your ends with mosaic crochet, uh, overlay mosaic crochet in particular. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section below because I love to see your comments. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. And also tag me in your makes uh, at Bella Coco Crochet on Instagram so I can see what you've been up to. Thanks for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.